Using the double pinch pot technique is an excellent way to make a spherical form for a sculpture or for pottery. Today we're going to use it to make an organic form. Enjoy! To begin, you're going to take an orange sized piece of clay and break it into two equal pieces and pack them into a ball. If one of the clay pieces is slightly bigger than the other, just pinch off a little bit to make them about the same size and pack them into a ball again. Having the two lumps of clay the same size will make it much easier to make the two halves of the sphere the same size later on. Begin by holding the lump of clay in your hand and with your other hand, use your thumb to push down into the center of the clay. You want to go down far enough to only leave about a quarter or a half inch of clay at the bottom. If you don't go far enough, later on when we go to fire them, they can explode or just be really heavy. Then you want to continue on by pinching the clay in between your thumb and your forefinger while rotating the clay with your other hand. See this illustration how I'm pinching all the way down at the bottom between my thumb and my forefinger? If you begin by pinching up too high, then later on the pot will be too big and you won't be able to get your hand down at the bottom. So concentrate on the bottom first. Keep rotating and pinching it as you go. As the pot gets bigger and the bottom begins to get thinner, you can concentrate on pinching on the middle section of the clay pot. Keep rotating it, keep using equal pressure, and try not to squeeze too hard, and try not to squeeze the rim that much. Focus on that middle part. Once you've gotten some of the thickness out of the middle section of the pot, you can move to the upper section of the pot. Ultimately, what we're going for is to have the rim of our pot about the thickness of our finger turn sideways. If you get the rim too much thinner than that, it'll be difficult to join the two pieces together. So take it easy, try not to pinch the top too much. When you're satisfied with the thickness of the rim and the rest of the pot, it can sometimes be helpful to set it aside to dry a little bit and then go back again and pinch it some more. Setting it aside will allow it to stiffen up. Sometimes the clay can get a little floppy and hard to work with and setting it aside will let it stiffen up so it's not so difficult to work with. And then you can continue pinching it all around just to even up the thickness and possibly get a little thinner so your final product isn't so heavy and it'll dry faster. This is what a finished pot should look like if you were to cut it in half. It should be even all the way around and have a rim that's about the thickness of your finger turned sideways. Once you've gotten this far, then you can set this aside. When you set it down, you want to set it on the rim of the pot. Setting it on the bottom of the pot will cause it to get a flat bottom. If your pot gets a flat bottom, it'll be hard to turn into a sphere later on. You're going to continue by repeating the same process for your second lump of clay. Push in with the center with your thumb, begin pinching at the bottom, and then as you get the bottom thinned out, you work towards the middle and then towards the rim. I want to check periodically for two things. One, that the rim is the right thickness, and then two, check for size. As soon as the second lump of clay has gotten as big as the first lump of clay, then you're ready to go on to the next step. Pinch for a while, then check the size, pinch for a while, check the size, and repeat this process till they're identical in diameter of the rim. that you have two identical pinch pots, we're going to join them together. But before we do, you're going to notice that there's a small gap between the two pinch pots where the rims curve inwards. There's a very easy way to fix that, and we're going to do that by flattening out the rim with our thumb. Place your hands on the outside wall of the pinch pot and your thumb on the rim. With your thumb, you're going to push down and outwards towards your fingers. 
This will flatten the rim and spread the walls outwards, and this later on will eliminate that gap. Go ahead and go all the way around, pushing down and out with your thumb towards your fingers until both rims are flat on both pieces. Look at how nicely they fit together now that we've pushed on the rim. We've eliminated that small gap and it's going to be very easy to join them together. The two most common problems when doing the pinch pot is one, only pinching at the rim, which will cause the rim to be very thin and the bottom to be very thick and could possibly cause an explosion. The second being some people are too aggressive with their pinching and then their pot has very thick and thin spots in it, making it harder to work with. Here's a pot that's been pinched only at the rim. You can see when I cut this in half that it would be really thin at the top and very hard to join together. And look at how thick that bottom is. There's going to be water trapped in that clay and it could possibly cause an explosion when we go to fire Now that it. you have two matching pinch pots, you're going to roll out 10 to 20 pea-sized pieces of clay and set them aside to get leather hard or bone dry. These are going to make our organic forms rattle. Once your clay beads have dried to the leather hard or bone dry stage, you're going to wrap them in either a tissue or a couple squares of toilet paper. This will keep them from sticking to the slip or to the wet clay inside of your pinch pot. Place them in one half of the pinch pot now or wait till after you've scored and slipped it. Using a fork, aggressively and deeply score the rim of both pinch pots. Scoring too lightly will cause your pot to come apart later, so you really want to make sure that you dig in with either a fork or a needle tool to get it scored very well. After scoring, you want to generously coat the rim with water or slip. It might be a good idea to wait till after you've done this step to put in the clay beads, but if you have them in there right now, just be careful not to drip too much water on them. After scoring and putting slip or water on the rims, you can start to join them together. Some people like to use their finger to join them together. Other people like the popsicle stick. I find the popsicle stick to be more effective. Sometimes the slip or the water that's on the rim causes my finger to just to slide over the joint and not join it together. So I find that I like the popsicle stick better, but whatever works for you, you can use. One last and final measure that I feel like is extremely f effective in joining the two pieces together is to slightly twist the two domes together. This will really ensure that where you scored and slipped get pushed together and then I like to go back over it with a popsicle stick. At this point, since our two pinch pots encapsulate air, they can be shaped just much like a water balloon. So you can pat it any way you want. If you want it slightly egg shaped or round or oval, you can pat it into any shape you'd like. If you're doing a round shape, this last and final step is quite fun. Clean off the table of any of the hard chunks of clay. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll this ball of clay all around your table in every different directions. Make sure you're spinning it and going in all different directions. And the table, the smoothness of the table is going to smooth any imperfections away on your clay sphere and make it perfectly round. And it'll even shine up the surface a little bit. I've seen students do this for so long that their, um, their, their clay sphere becomes shiny. It's really actually pretty cool. It just burnishes all the bumps out of it and gets it perfectly into a sphere. But you have to be really careful to make sure that you go in all different directions. 
If you go in the same direction over and over again, it'll become a cylinder instead of a sphere. Before placing it in our bin for next class, we're gonna poke a hole in it with a needle tool. This will prevent any pressure from building up in the sphere. As your clay shrinks, the air inside of it doesn't and it can cause pressure that can pull apart the seam in the middle. Gently place it in your bin, put the lid on, and I'll see you next class.